All right, so when we find ourselves in this position, one of the, the things I saw some people making some mistakes with is when they're here like this and they're trying to finish the straight arm lock, I see them either using one leg to create force just by lifting and trying to finish here or using just the other. You have to use both. So you do need to like create a little lift so his arm is off the ground. And then the finish comes not by bringing your leg this way. There's no pressure here on the arm. It's actually just straightening your leg and then letting the weight of your leg kind of drop. Right? It comes on very fast because the arm is already fully extended. So just a little too quick and you'll hurt someone's arm. So in training, make sure to take these ones very slow. The consequence of that is because the position is kind of unstable, if you take it slow, they might be able to wriggle out or push at your face and you'll get, you're going to be like off balance, right? So in, it's, this is more for like a competitive setting. If you want to just make someone tap fast and you get to this position, it's one of those things you like push for it and then you just bah, like quick before they have a chance to really escape. So obviously you can't really drill that or even practice that in training. Um, it's kind of like heel hooks, like you're not just going to come in here and just try and rip someone's leg off. But if you take it slow, they're probably going to escape and that's okay. Just be aware that this, posi this position can come on pretty fast. However, in training, when you're taking it slow, there are positions and opportunities where um, I'm... What was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> there are positions... Okay, yeah. So when, when he's wriggling about, there are other setups we can do that rely on more of a slow set up here, okay? So with this leg over the arm like this, we actually have a reverse triangle opportunity here. So if I'm if I'm scared to try and hurt like tap the guy cuz I don't want to hurt his arm here like this, I can transition to a, a reverse triangle here. And the way I'm going to do that is just by going from the arm lock position, leaning forward and catching the head here with the other hand. So I actually let go of the scarf hold here and just start hugging her behind the back and I bring this leg up high underneath his shoulder like this. So the arm lock is still extended. He can't bring his arms together. And I've kind of pinned this other arm to his uh, side here. And then I'm stepping over the head. OK? So it's a pretty simple transition. From here, once the leg steps over the head, I need to be pulling up at the elbow right away so I can get my hips really tight. If I just keep the arm here and step over and try and figure four like this, it's just going to neck crank him. It's not going to be a choke because, see, there's a lot of space here. It's not pressuring in on this side. So the full sequence would be from side control my opponent gets an underhook, and I see just it's, a, it's an opportunity. I probably wouldn't go to this position intentionally, but it's an opportunity to transition into the scarf hold. Threaten the first one, he extends his arm. Threaten the second one, he's hyper flexible, I can't do it. Hug the, hug the head, control. Knee comes under the shoulder, control here. He's still going to be wriggling around, so I need to make sure I have my weight on him. Leg comes over the top, elbow control towards his face, not towards my thigh, because this isn't going to help. It has to be up towards his face. Here, pull my feet and my knees close together. My forehead goes to the far side of the mat. And this is where the choke comes on really tight. You keep, you keep your hamstrings engaged, and you lock here and finish, OK? For people who have shorter legs, you might have some trouble getting the full lock here. If that, if that occurs, switch your hand from the elbow to your ankle and help yourself lock it in place like this. And if you're unable to get the actual choke finish, you can see how this would be a good opportunity to set up the Kimura as well. Because his arm is in an underhook position, so he doesn't really have anything to hold on to. If his arm was in front of me still, it would be a little more difficult to lock up the Kimura. But because we trapped the arm here, it's very easy to also include a Kimura lock if you're unable to finish the actual reverse triangle. All right. One more time. Here, drive, he extends, hug the head. This sets up my Kimura grip, this movement right here, pinning the arm, bringing my thigh up underneath the shoulder, putting all my weight on him, leg over, forehead down, lock. If you can finish the choke here, you're good. If not, you can kind of roll to this side and start exposing the Kimura grip. Even if he goes all the way on top of me here, Scott, try and come up on top. As long as that wrist is behind his back, you're in a really good spot to finish as well. So this is just a submission string. Each de defense your opponent sets up allows you to transition into the next submission, okay? Questions? Three, two, one. If, as long as you can lock the triangle, that's still good. But to finish the choke, it's got to be pulled before you lock the triangle. So go ahead and do the, the sequence. Easton gets given the underhook nice. You switch to the scarf hold. Americana, thre threaten it under the leg though, like you want to trap it so he straightens the arm to defend. Then this one comes over, threaten arm lock, 
by bringing this knee up a little bit. Yep, slow, slow. Good. Now from here, we're transitioning. So here, this one's going underneath the head first. Right arm reaches back in front of the elbow so you can hold it and kind of, but see how the, if this is too deep or too shallow. If it's over, in, over this part of his elbow, he still has underhook. But if you go in, in front of his elbow this way, it's a little more secure. Now from here, the arm transitions in front of the head, pulls into you, steps over the head, lock. Right here is where we start pulling at the elbow. Pull it up towards his face. And now when you bring your head down like this and lock the triangle here, that's where the choke comes on. There it is. Feel the difference? Yeah, so you have to do it like in those steps. If you just grab his head, yeah, you can grab his head, but the choke won't be applied. And that's okay as long as you know that the only other option is the Kimura. But doing the first one properly, because you're already in such a good position, lets you choke him and also Kimura him at the same time, which is better.